Hello and welcome. I'm Dr. Zafar, a pulmonologist with special interest for taking care of people with COPD. Today we're going to talk about a special feature that happens in the lungs of people with COPD called dynamic hyperinflation or air stacking. Now this is a very important uh, concept to understand so you can manage your symptoms better and deal with your disease in a better way. So stay tuned as we talk about what causes people with COPD to get short of breath and stop exercising, what is dynamic hyperinflation and how does it feel to have it, and then what are the ways to treat it and manage it in a better way. Why do people with COPD get short of breath? Now everyone would have some limitation to their exercise. Even the best athletes in the world would have to stop at time when they are out of breath or they have reached their peak. Now what determines our exercise ability is our lungs, our heart, and our muscles. Now when we are exercising, our muscles need more oxygen, and the lungs are the source of bringing oxygen into the body. The heart needs to pump faster and stronger so that it can circulate the blood that carries the oxygen and removes the carbon dioxide and acid, and the muscles are going to use the oxygen, and they need good supply of blood to remove all the acid that is built up. When a normal person starts exercising, the most common reason for them to stop is because their muscles get exhausted and they are not conditioned enough to continue more. But what happens in people with COPD is that the first limitation they hit is not from their muscles, it is rather their lungs. They reach a point where they are not able to keep up with the breathing that is needed for continuing exercising. This happens because their lungs are damaged and the air tubes of the lungs are now tight and flimsy, they easily collapse as well. So the flow of the air in and out of the lung is not as easy and smooth, especially when breathing out because the air tubes become even tighter. And the second part is that the air sacs are damaged, so the exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide is also not as good as it used to be and it takes a longer time for the lungs to absorb the oxygen from the air. So it starts off with lungs being the first thing that stops person from exercising, but then people feel very uncomfortable when they're short of breath and they naturally adopt a more sedentary lifestyle. They stop exercising further and then slowly and slowly their exercise capacity goes down because now their muscles are also not conditioned and their heart is also not conditioned. This is the downward spiral of COPD, that what starts off that people stop exercising because they get short of breath and now they are living a more sedentary lifestyle and their muscles and heart are also not in a good shape to exercise whenever they are challenged again. And slowly the ability to do exercise and walk around in the house and all those chores become more and more difficult. So what can we do to learn more about lung mechanics, what's going on in the lungs and how can we tackle it so this downward spiral can be stopped and people can gain better function in their day to day living. So the next question is, what is dynamic hyperinflation and how does it feel to have it? Now let's first break down this term for better understanding. Dynamic means it keeps on changing, it's not the same all the time. Hyper means too much and inflation means air in the lungs. So dynamic hyperinflation means that the moments when you have more and more air stacked in the lungs and in the chest. In COPD, because of the small, tight, flimsy air tubes, the airflow is not as easy and smooth. The air that you breathe in needs a longer time to be exhaled out. And when people start exercising, they are breathing faster and they don't have much time to breathe all the way out. And with each breath, there's a little bit more air trapped in the lungs. And as this goes on and on in exercise, the lungs keep on hyperinflating, hyperinflating to the point that it becomes very uncomfortable to breathe. The diaphragm becomes flat, and the chest is expanded. This also makes a person very anxious about getting the next breath in. This is the feeling of dynamic hyperinflation. This is what's going on in the lungs. It not only just makes a person more short of breath and they have to stop exercising, it also reduces their oxygen levels. We see in clinical studies that the more dynamic hyperinflation there is, the more drop in the oxygen there is when you're exercising. It also affects your cardiac function, your heart function, and your ability to have a good heart response during exercise. So now the next question is, what can we do about it? And how can we tackle it so we can get the most out of the lungs that we already have? So as you understood the process, what you need to do is to slow down the breathing, give it enough time that you can exhale the trapped air out, 
you want to prolong your exhalation time and you want to have some focus on your breathing. And also if you can have some back pressure so that the small flimsy air tubes do not collapse easily. Now this can be done in a few different ways. The first and most important thing is to take your inhalers regularly. Inhalers are bronchodilators, which means that they will try to dilate your air tubes as much as possible. And that will make the airflow much easier. There is a lot of clinical data to su support that use of the right inhalers in people with COPD will help improve their symptoms, their day-to-day -day living, their functional capacity and quality of life. Now, if you're still struggling with your shortness of breath during activities, despite using an inhaler, talk to your doctors to see if they want to change the inhaler to a different one now or add a combination inhaler. Second is to learn breathing techniques that give you better breath control. The most important one that all COPD patients should learn is a pursed lip breathing, which means that you purse your lips as you're breathing out, you breathe in through the nose, and when breathing out, you purse your lips as if you're blowing soap bubbles. Now this will slow down your breathing, give you some back pressure and help you focus on the breathing and prolong your exhalation. All these things are needed so that you don't stack in too much air. You can do that whenever you feel short of breath or whenever you are doing your exercise and watch my other videos to learn more about these techniques. Another effective way to gain breath control is to use this small device called Pep Buddy. It's a small hands-free whistle-like device that you can hang around your neck with a lanyard and it's meant to be hands-free. So you can just put it in your mouth and it will give all the benefits of pursely breathing and maybe a bit more because it's more consistent and easy to use. Watch our other videos to learn more about this device and see if you will be someone who could benefit from it. Clinical studies have shown that Pep Buddy reduces shortness of breath and improves quality of life in about 72% of people with COPD and also improves oxygen levels in about 36% of the patients. So this is a small device that is easy to use and can help reduce your shortness of breath and the anxiety and fear of being out of breath. Another intervention for hyperinflation is to use lung valves. Now, this is an invasive procedure in which certain people with certain type of lung inflation can qualify. Based on the pattern of your COPD, your doctors may suggest that you can be evaluated for getting valves in your lungs, which will reduce the size of the lung that is damaged and hyperinflated like a balloon inside and give more space to the healthy lung to function more. So that's another procedure that can help out with hyperinflation process of the lung and improve shortness of breath. So with all this information, I hope that you are now better prepared to handle your shortness of breath. You understand what is going on in your lungs. You understand what is dynamic hyperinflation and how it affects your day-to-day -day function and you can find ways to mitigate it and breathe easier. Thank you for watching and check out our other videos to learn more about COPD and better breathing.